Hey everybody, in this clip I have recorded a call with a research master student, uh, Bobby, and she had a question on how to get started retrieving data from the API of a service. And actually I didn't have a clue either. So um, we had a call and I recorded this call and I kind of, you know, uh, started just like coding a bit. And in the end, we actually managed to retrieve some data. After that, we committed um, our work um, to a new uh, GitHub repository, which we initialized from one of the workflow templates available at tilburgsensehub.com. Uh, this is what we did in this video. So have fun watching and have a good learning experience. This is a video in which I use the course content at online data collection and management to kind of get started with using the API of Trek TV. So they got an API. So when you Google for Trek API documentation, you're going to get access to that documentation. So the first thing is we need to learn how we authenticate um, using this API. Do you have some kind of authorization token? Yeah, I think you can get this when, when people want to ac have access to your app, right? Exactly. So the question is, is this data set available publicly or only to the users? But are these endpoints accessible for authorized users only or for everybody? Because this thing looks like as if it is only available to authorized users. Users with public data will return info with all get methods. Private users, including yourself, require valid OAuth. Check API key. Oh, that's good. See, this is without. You don't need to authenticate from this one. So we do need a header. What is the header? The header is this one. I think we got this. So now we're going to put in your client ID, which is this one. Um, let me see how we do this here. Headers. Yeah, see, so there we go. Okay. That's it. There's a difference between, okay, so these, why do, why are these API, what are these APIs for? These APIs are for actually allowing developers to build apps for users. Yeah. So the most important thing for them is actually to get access to this user data but not all endpoints require you to do this OAuth, which is like an application. It's like a protocol for you to disclose data to an app developer. Yeah. So what's what has happened here is that you mistook that for something that you need to do while actually you require to get data from an endpoint that, um, that doesn't um, have this authentication, right? So yeah, now you can look at, now you can look at what are the parameters that you could put in there so this is trending shows, popular shows, recommended shows, played shows, get the most watched shows. I mean, you can call, I mean, the most watched shows that or that's already get the most watched shows by period. And then period is weekly, daily. Let's see, you know, now you can, now you have the toolkit to start exploring this data. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of that because you don't all, you know, don't need this. So this is, you can start exploring it like this. So this is endpoint, endpoint uh, trending shows. And what you can do is you can convert this to JSON. So by the way, endpoint setup, import requests, import JSON. And then you can bump this to JSON. Right, and then you can explore this JSON at the time. Okay, so let me run this. There we go. So now yeah. you can start doing this. Next one. Cool. Endpoint. Which one do we want to try out? 
watched. Let's try a parameter here. Yeah. So we need to do this. Watched and then we do daily. Yeah, and now it's like, this is amazing. Got ID numbers, yeah. TV rating, and TV age, watch count. How do we? How many objects do we get? So now we can start exploring, right? You can parse for yeah. O and can print O dot uh, O dot show uh, title. Okay, so we only oh get God. this. So the question is, are there any like next pages that we can get? This is only the most important, but can we somewhat extend this? Extended info. Yeah, now you, you now you should look at like how you can get more values here. Are there like parameters that you can? Yeah. Good. So like the next step is like now that you know how to get data from this is to start exploring what endpoints give you what data. Yeah. Okay. So you like, again, go to this, right? Sorry, not opportunity, data availability assessment. You try to see what entities are there, how they're linked yeah. to each other, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. All Thanks. right. Awesome. Well, happy this worked out. Yeah. Okay, so now I can actually get started to explore what data is available for me. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, cool. Uh, what to do with the, the GitHub? Because now you made a uh, repository, right? Yeah, oh, that's a good one. So what I'll do now is um, I'll actually create um, a new repository Yeah. from a template repository. Um, so what I'm doing is I'll go to Tilburg Science Hub and we got an awesome example for a reproducible workflow by like a colleague in the econ metrics group. Yeah. Uh, not this one. Let me see. And I'm going to use this template. And I'm going to uh, call this um, BOD PhD. We can uh, do this for now. Well, just keep it public. Now it's generating this thing and we'll have to add this so I can actually git clone. I'm just downloading all the files which are there and then I'm just moving things. Cloning this to VOD project, VOD project. Now the only thing that I need to do is save the file that we've written. I'm creating a new uh, pipeline stage. All this checked TV. And now I'm adding this to get it at source collection. So all of those files are going to be tracked from now onwards and data exploration. Now pushing it. Now you'll see this available on, on the Git side. So, so you got the source code here, so you can start adding to it. And the last thing that I need to do, I need to add you as a, as a, as a boss to this repository, essentially. Yeah. So which, uh, what, what's your username? Good. So now by running, like you go to the terminal, mm -hmm. whatever project you're on, you do Git clone, and then you're pasting the URL of this yeah. repository, which is this. And yeah. that's going to create a folder VOD PhD on your system. OK, cool. And then let me summarize. So what we did is we, um, we explored a new API that we've never seen before. So we opened up the documentation, and we um, uh, opened a Python Jupyter notebook and started exploring around. And the first mistake that we did was that we kind of wanted to authenticate with the API. Um, but actually that authentication was only needed to get user level data, but typically you only get that for users who give consent, which is very difficult in a scraping research project. So what we then discovered is that there are endpoints which are publicly accessible once you register for an application key. 
with the service. And that's what we did. And in the code, you got a bit of prototyping scripts uh, that, that do that. And then finally, we could created a new project, like a research project from a template from Tilburg Science Hub and committed our Jupyter notebook. So that's kind of what we did. All right. So I'm closing this call. So thanks for watching.